war. Our knowledge of the actual torture techniques comes from a single handbook for a Honduran training session, the CIA's Human Resources Exploitation Manual 1983. Again, if you wish to read this manual for yourself, just go to your desktop and Google the phrase Human Resources Exploitation Manual. To establish control at the outset, the questioner should, the CIA instructor told his Honduran trainees back in 1983, quote, manipulate the subject's environment to create unpleasant or intolerable situations, to disrupt patterns of time, space, and sensory perception. To affect this psychological disruption, this 1983 CIA handbook specified techniques that seem strikingly similar to those outlined 20 years before in the Qbark manual and those that would be used 20 years later at Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. When the Cold War came to a close, Washington resumed its advocacy of human rights, ratifying the UN Convention Against Torture in 1994 that banned the infliction of severe psychological and physical pain. Now, on the surface, with the ratification of this UN Anti-Torture Convention, the United States seemed to have resolved the tension between its anti-torture principles and its torture practices. But, but, when President Clinton sent this UN Convention to Congress for ratification in 1994, he included language drafted six years before by the Reagan administration with four detailed paragraphs of diplomatic reservations, all focused on just one word in the 26 printed pages of this UN Convention. That word was mental. Significantly, these intricately constructed diplomatic reservations redefine torture as interpreted by the United States to exclude sensory deprivation and self-inflicted pain, the very techniques that the CIA had refined at such great cost in decades past. This definition was repro re reproduced verbatim in domestic legislation enacted to give legal force under U.S. law to this U.N. Convention, first in Section 2340 of the U.S. Federal Code, and then in the War Crimes Act of 1996. Now, remember that number, Section 2340, for it is the key to unlocking the meaning of the controversial military commission's law enacted by the U.S. Congress in September of last year. This is when we really need a Blue Book exam. This is what Blue Book exams are for. If this were one of my lecture classes at the University of Wisconsin, I would say, remember Section 2340, and that's a signal saying it's going to be in the midterm. And so everybody would scribble it down and go off and read it. But you're just here. It's late in the afternoon. You're kind of drifting off. But, but just snap out of the reverie. Let me bring you back. 2340-2340. Remember it, because it's very important in understanding the final and very important part of this lecture, the legalization part. In effect, by ratification of the UN Convention in this way, Washington kind of cut a deal with the UN. You know, you got a UN any torture convention, tell you what, split it down the middle. We'll ban that nasty physical stuff, but hey, forget about the psychological. We'll exempt that. By failing to repudiate the CIA's use of torture, while adopting a UN convention that condemned its practice, the United States left this contradiction buried like a political landmine ready to explode, to detonate with such phenomenal force just 10 years later in the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. Part three.